All right, hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, by now you've probably gone through some of my chemistry videos, some of my nature videos, some of my physics videos, but, but today, photography? Maybe go through some photography, yes? Yeah, so I'm gonna do something kind of fun today. Uh, go through my bag and kind of look at every lens that I have, uh, save one, one I lent to a friend, so it's not here right now, um, but these I've accumulated uh, over, over the years. Some were given, some I bought. Um, so yeah, it's like a mini collection here. And we'll see what each one does and what the perspective is like. Hopefully that'll be helpful for you when trying to frame the perfect shot. Okay, so the first lens we're using is a Sam Yang, very wide angle lens. Uh, this is the only one we're gonna have a hood because this hood is built in. All the other ones will not have a hood. All right, this one is kind of unique. It's all manual, so really kind of fun. Kind of like when you drive a manual car. Uh, nothing automatic, you set the f-stop yourself. Uh, you do the focus yourself. The camera doesn't pick up anything except for uh, how much light you're getting, all right? But everything else the camera doesn't know. Um, it is a f2.8 and 14 millimeter, so very wide angle and no image stabilization. So for all the lenses, even if they have IS, I will be turning it off, no image stabilization. Okay, next lens is a Canon 35 millimeter. This is a F2. It has IS, but I will not be using it. The next lens we will have, uh, moving up in the focal length, is the Tamron SP. It's a 45, F1.8. Okay, next one is the Canon 70 to 200 f 2.8 L. Again, like the other ones, it does have image stabilization, but I will not be using it. It'll be off. I believe this is the first generation one, so like the camera, it's pretty old, but still works very well. Pretty heavy. And this is the only zoom lens that we're using uh, in this video. So just to keep it fair and try to keep the settings the same, I will just not zoom it and just keep it at 70. Next one is a Canon 85 EF F1.8. This one does not have IS. Okay, and the final one, last but not least, is the Canon Macro 100. EF100, it's an F2.8 L. It does have IS, but I will not be using it. So the camera that we're using for all these photos is the Canon EOS 5D Mark II. So pretty old camera. Uh, my father-in-law got this probably 15 years ago and doesn't use it anymore, so he gave it to me. Uh, still very good camera though. Um, they will all be on AV mode, so that's aperture priority, aperture priority, and set to F4. For the outdoor pictures, they will be at ISO 100. Uh, and I chose f4 because that's something all the lenses have in common. They don't all go down to f2 or f1.8, something like that, but they do all go to f4. So that's what we're using. Okay, for all these photos, they're all outdoor. So all these outdoor photos, my subject is this basketball, a really old Wilson Evolution basketball from over 10 years ago. You can see it's really worn out, which is great because later you can see some of the detail uh, with that. And we're just outside on the driveway. Okay, I'd say it's a partly sunny day, so Pretty nice lighting conditions here. Uh, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon, so sun is you know almost overhead. Uh, there will be three photos for each lens. The first one from about a meter away, okay? The second one will be about two meters away, so that's six feet, maybe about there. And then the third photo will be on the grass here, that's about four meters away. I'll be standing about here, which is about 13 feet away, and taking the picture for the third picture in the set. Okay, so here we go with the photos now, the actual photos. Like I said, we are starting with the shortest in that same order, shortest focal length, 14 millimeters in this case. All these subjects, the basketball, are one meter away, one meter away from that lens. Okay, so here you can see a um, very wide angle, and although I'm pretty up close to that basketball, just three feet away, you can still see a lot of the background. All right, now here we have the 35 millimeter, and... Of course, you see less of the background. 45 millimeters, some people say this is more like the closest to natural vision of what you would see just with your eyes. So you can see like a very natural looking, the ball doesn't look distorted, the background is nice and blurred, you can tell it's far away. Um, really great for street photography uh, in that regard. Uh, here's a 70 millimeter. 
Um, a little misleading because this zoom lens actually doesn't go to one meter. The minimum is 1.4. So that's actually about 1.4 meters away, like four feet away. Um, and here we have the 85 millimeter. All right. And you can see this is kind of close. You really wouldn't get that close just three feet away using this lens. You, I mean, you would see everyone's like wrinkles and like uh, acne and everything. So that's probably too close. And then here we have the 100 millimeter. You can barely see the background really up close. This is a macro lens. The purpose of this one is to get very close and look at insects and like uh, the wings of a fly, you know, or something like that. So you can see with this basketball, a lot of the detail really comes out when you're up that close 100 millimeters. Okay, so moving on, now we're going in the same order, 14 millimeter first um, using that lens, but the subject is now two meters away. All right, so right now we're standing, you know, six and a half feet away, and definitely you can see a lot of the background. So you would definitely use a lens like this for landscape, like maybe you're on vacation and you wanna show like everything around you, the beach and the trees and the sky, you know, that's when you'd probably use a wide angle lens like that. Okay, so here the 35 millimeter, uh, you could tell why people use this and kind of just slap it on. All right, I'm gonna take street photography and uh, I might see a person, so I need to see the basketball, right, the person, but I need the background also, or maybe something in like scenery. So it's good for kind of all purpose use. Uh, some people say they would use this for street photography, kind of just walking around and don't know what your subject is gonna be, all right? Um, but I actually think this next one, uh, the 45, is better for street photography. All right, so let me show you what I mean, right? So you see, yeah, not as wide as the 14, definitely, right? Um, I can see some detail, but this is, like I said, kind of like your natural vision. You focus on something uh, two meters away, the background will be kind of blurred, and you don't see that much of the background, and everything kind of looks like in its natural place, um, and nothing is distorted, nothing's too zoomed in, like a, the basketball is kind of like a perfect circle, um, and really what you see is what you get in the photo. That's using the 45 millimeter. This one is the zoom lens set to 70 uh, millimeters, and of course, not as much background, and here is the 85. And here, you would stand about this far away, right? So when you're taking a picture of someone, about two big steps back, right? So you're not like right up in their face, yet you see this detail. And yet you see it's very sharp. And you see not much of the background, and the background is nice and blurred, right? So the 85, I love for portraits. You're not standing so close to the subject. Uh, you're not like right up in their face. You're far enough so that they feel comfortable and you still get this beautiful image. Um, it's not distorted. Like I said, you don't look like, you know, you're, you're in like a, a fish eye or like a peephole or something like that, right? So 85 is definitely the go-to if you're doing headshots, as you can see with this lovely basketball. All right, and then here we have the 100, uh, very close in. I guess you could use this for portrait. It's a macro lens. I guess you could use the 100 millimeter for portrait, but uh, it only goes to 2.8, right? So a lot of these 100 millimeter lenses, they don't go to 1.8 or two. Um, so if you're outside, outdoors, I guess it's a good portrait lens still. Okay, now for the last set, I am standing about 13 feet away, four meters away from that lovely basketball and starting with a wide angle lens, like, wow, I, I can really see everything now, right? Like the sky, the driveway, my neighbor's house, the house in the background, the car, you can almost see uh, my house too, right? And right in the middle, th that person would be kind of too far away. Um, and if you look at the edges, like the edges look weird. Like, why does the car look like that? It's really not that long, right? So again, for a landscape, you wanna show that like the ocean's endless. Uh, if you're inside a house and, and really wanna stretch out that house or like the outside of the house and make it look large, then yeah, you can use the wide angle lens. All right, now here we are off the 35. Um, standing this far away, I guess for like a group photo, right? You would take like four or five giant steps back to take a big group photo. Uh, I think the 35 would be perfect for that. Um, and then here's the 45. I can still see a little bit um, of the background, zoomed in a little more, so I don't see all the sky, but I can definitely still see more of that house in the background. Um, that would be great too for a group shot, maybe 
just have to stand even a little bit further back. Uh, here's the 70, and you notice with the 85 and the 70, they pretty much look the same. I think my footing was a little off, um, but they pretty much look the same. And this is fine for, uh, again, like, like modeling here, you would use the 85 again, uh, I recommend, and you maybe want the whole body, right? Like looking at the clothing too, and the shoes or something like that, right? So great for uh, portraits that, that include more than just the headshot, more than just the face. Um, and then finally, the 100, I'm standing so far away, but I still see some pretty good detail with this. Um, again, I could use this and recommend it for outdoor settings. Um, and of course, use image stabilization or tripod to help you out also. All right, great. Again, so I hope that was helpful for you, seeing all those different lens focal lengths. Um, you're trying to frame the perfect shot or get a different perspective. I hope that was helpful for you to see what it's kind of like, um, or if you're trying to buy a certain kind of lens uh, with a certain focal length. I hope that was helpful in learning or teaching photography, and thanks for watching.